Welcome back to another Q&A, and before we get started, I have a quick announcement to make. This series is coming to a temporary stop, at least until the end of the summer. As you know, the world is getting back to normal, and I'm feeling really productive. So what I want to do is bring you a lot more frequent, regular videos. And any questions that you may have, instead of banging them out one by one in a Q&A format, I'd like to make dedicated segments to that topic in which full B-roll is also included. In this way, we're still accomplishing the same goal, but now we're doing it in a more professional, organized, clear way to which I can write down the ideas. I can plan it out in a manner that's more structured and easier to understand. So it's less on the go like this. So I'm gonna try it out, see how it goes, and hey, Maybe once in a while I can do some live Q&As too. I'm sure you guys would love that. Okay, that's the announcement. If you have other ideas, let's see them down below. And let's begin the Q&A, which is a damn good one, by the way. First question. Thoughts on incorporating weighted inverted rows, loading plates on torso into one's CalSynx program to build the upper back and traps. Let me first say that the regular inverted row is probably good enough for most lifters, especially if you do it at the end of your back workout as in starting with weighted pull-ups, then doing barbell rows, and maybe even a cable row, or just your third back exercise. In this way, higher repetitions of 15 to 25 should be satisfactory. And if it isn't, you can elevate your feet or do the exercise off gymnastic rings, play with the angles so that you don't have to load it up. And this is pretty much what I've done nine out of 10 times. Now you can load it. And there are some ghetto techniques of doing that, like taking weight plates on your chest and wrapping it around with knee wraps or soft ties or whatever is available. That absolutely works. Alternatively, feel free to load chains on your torso. 15, 30 pounds, 60, 90. That's all you really need, if I'm being honest. But if you don't want to go down that path, then simply buy a plate loaded vest. Do what you got to do. Only thing is, range of motion might not be the same because now you got this thing sticking out. But that probably doesn't matter to begin with because most people aren't going to touch your chest on the inverted row, nor is that required. If you do it with gymnastic rings, problem solved. So, yeah, in terms of building the upper back, getting that maximum thickness in without spinal compression. This is one of the best ways to do it. It has amazing carryover to other calisthenics exercises, as well as getting you stronger in the gym. Don't think for a second that this is a weak baby movement. It isn't. Hey, bro, is it more effective on building deadlifts to do back offsets after one or max or to do high rep accessories after one or max, RDL, etc. for intensity day? For high rep specifically, I would not do a regular conventional deadlift. It has one of the worst stimulus fatigue ratios ever. Now, when you're not that strong, okay, do what you got to do. But once you're deadlifting the fives, there's a better way. Do the Romanian deadlift. It's an exercise that trains the eccentric. You get that stretch reflex out of the bottom, and it's more suited for reps of 8 to 10, 12, 15, doing multiple sets. Try doing three sets of 10 on a conventional deadlift. Tell me how you feel the next day. It's not the best investment from a recovery standpoint. The stimulus is great. No one's denying that. I love it. But the fatigue accumulation is too much when you can get all the hypertrophy benefits you need by doing a similar way of pulling. RDL gets the glutes and hamstrings further developed. You're not missing out on spinal rectus either. And don't let anyone tell you that you have to do a pull from the ground for rep work. It's not mandatory. You're already going heavy on conventional deadlifts. Maybe you're even doing triples and fives on your block pulls. So if you're going to high rep something, do it on an exercise that allows you to get more out of less weight. To me, that's always made the most sense. I've been lifting for three and a half years and still have novice strength. My bench is 90 kilos for seven reps. Like my strength has been going up at all. Not really a question, but I'm going to answer this. Dude, you are an intermediate lifter. Fact. The reason why you're not making gains is probably because you're running a novice program. You've outclassed it. Move on. Start using the conjugate system or something else that's a bit more specialized. Address your weaknesses. I can guarantee you that after three and a half years, you have them. Hey, it took you longer than most. I would say the average is between six and 15 months. Worst case, 
two years on programs that aren't really the best, or you don't have the greatest genetics either. In your case, it was three and a half. I don't know what you did with that extra year and a half. Maybe your program just wasn't optimal, but that's all done. You're intermediate. We can't just base it off this arbitrary number of, okay, you got to do 100 kilos for five reps. I used to say that in the past, and I was wrong. A lot of us were, which is why I corrected my position in 2017. You are no longer a novice when basic linear progression ceases. That's what happened to you. Linear gains stopped completely, and now you're having plateaus left and right. And that's why your bench is not moving up, because you are not a novice. So isn't that great news? Oftentimes, I'll have novices who wish to rush into an intermediate program. In your case, the eligibility is already present. So congratulations, next step for you is getting into that advanced status. And I'm sure you can pull off, even if it takes more time than normal. Hey Alex, how many dips should you be able to do with your own body weight before adding extra weight? Greetings from Germany. Well, much love from Canada. That's a tricky question. All depends if you want to do high rep dip workouts or if you're ready to go straight into basic linear progression using low repetitions, say in the 6 to 10 range. In that case, you probably don't need to do more than 12, 15 in one shot. But the calisthenics bias in me says that you should probably be able to do a lot more than that. At least 20 in one set. And that's not unrealistic at all, by the way. I think that it will be impossible for you not to get to that point if you actually train this exercise for years. 20 as an all-out AMRAP is nothing crazy. Many naturals can do 50 plus in a shot. So that would be my personal recommendation. Or if I want to be more on the elitist side, I can say build up to doing four sets of 25 or three sets of 15 to 20. Or maybe do some down dip workouts before even entering the weighted stuff. Because the moment you start, you'll probably be able to add a plate right off the bat. So is there really a need to go weighted right now? If the carryover is going to be there regardless after a certain point, probably don't need to. But look, that's just me sharing my own personal beliefs. If you could do three sets of 12 clean form, all right, add some weights, maybe start off with a five, 10 pounder. Now you're dropped down to maybe six or eight reps. Work your way up. I can't see why this would not work. And it would be extremely wrong of me to say that this is ineffective. I'm just trying to make you milk the body weight gains for a little bit longer. That's all. Hey Alex, since it's summer and I have quite a lot of time on my hands, I started working in the warehouse and I usually get around 15 to 25,000 steps a day. My question is, should I still do cardio? I'm also squatting every day and do calisthenics and powerlifting basically every day. Dude, you are a tank. Tricky question if I'm being honest with you. I don't know how to answer this because you have some guys who say if you're doing 10,000 steps a day, that already gives you the clear to skip your cardio. On top of that, you're running an extremely aggressive program doing calisthenics with powerlifting every single day combined with the warehouse stuff? F you must be sleeping and eating like a tank while really managing your stuff correctly, which I'm assuming you are because otherwise you wouldn't be able to get away with this setup. Kudos to you, brother. That takes a lot of willpower and organization. Not many people can pull this off. So the fact that you are is already very impressive. I'm going to say just keep milking it. You got the free time, make that money, make those gains. This is an investment. This summer, man, you're not going to regret it years from now. But going back to your question, should you skip cardio? If I were in your shoes, I probably would. That's just me keeping it real. Otherwise, you can always mix in some cardio type stuff during the calisthenics session, like doing burpees, maybe a hundred a day. Nothing too crazy. You get that heart rate elevated, try to pick up the pace every single time. So maybe something like that or doing a 12 minute run. I don't think you'd have to do a tremendous amount. Like right now I'm running at least 30 minutes a day. There's no way you would have to do that. I would say just sticking to the 10 to 20 zone is probably fine. And you don't have to creep up your intensity that high. So look, you're not sedentary. You probably have a really high TDEE, likely healthy regardless. And the additional exercise, I don't know how much more beneficial it's going to be. And if you skip, 
it's not really the end of the world. Hey Alex, I'm running your novice program and get severe back pain from squats only, not deadlifts. I recorded myself and my form is good. I even dropped the weight by a lot to really focus on form, but I'm still getting back pain. What can I replace the squats with and still get good leg gains? I can give you replacements, but first we have to address the root cause behind your back pain. Could it be you have scoliosis that you're twisting like crazy when you squat? Is the floor uneven and you don't even realize it? Hence why when you film, you're probably not 100% level, so you can't really detect that. Have you filmed from every possible angle, front, side, rear? You have to know with 100% accuracy that form actually is perfect. Because if it is, then I can only attribute it to something wrong with your discs and somehow that exact movement is causing pain or you have very weak spinal rectors in which even the light weights cannot fix. You have to attack the problem head on by doing things like reverse hyperextensions and good mornings, which I suspect you're doing when you squat. I don't know what numbers you're lifting. Maybe you're doing 225. If you're good morning that, even though you have the legs of a novice lifter, that basically means all the tension is going on your lower back. And 225 on a good morning is pretty heavy. You're an intermediate lifter as a bare minimum. Usually guys who do that for reps are advanced. So I think you're hinging at the hips too much. You're bending forward. Maybe you're doing an excessive low bar squat as well, which is not the correct placement. It's too low on the back. You're tilted all the way. Again, I don't know exactly what you look like, but those would be my speculations. And in that case, I can tell you to just do good mornings as an accessory lift. This way you get used to that additional volume being placed in the lower back. You're only as strong as the weakest link. Now for the style of squatting, give front squats a shot. The rask extension, it'll force you to be a lot more upright. Worst case, the upper back collapses and now the bar lands on the pins. But usually guys get less lower back pain and more ab pain. And obviously you're not going to be tilted in this position here while having the knees travel a lot more forward. That simple alteration of form can help you out. The zurchers, possibly, and if that still hurts, maybe you can give belt squats a shot, which has pretty much no stress on the lower back. You're pulling directly on that sacrum, actually. So please watch my full video on the topic, and I'm sure that's something that I said today will help you out. Hey Alex, I'm 18 years old, three years of training. My arms are 15 and a half inches and I can't bench 185 for reps. What do you recommend in my case? Thanks a lot. I don't recommend anything. There's nothing wrong with you. 15 and a half inch arms while not being able to bench 185 is actually a great sign. I wish I had your genetics. I would consider that to be blessed as a matter of fact. Because when I was benching 185, my arms were a lot smaller than 15 and a half. Put this in perspective. When I benched 405, they were 16 and a half inches. Only one above you. Yet hundreds of pounds additional. You don't have any problems other than the fact that given your training experience, you should probably be a little bit stronger. So what I will tell you to do is hop on my novice program or any other system that's similar. Otherwise, if you milk your linear gains, go into an intermediate. Though I can't confirm you at that point, and my suspicion tells me that you likely have another three months at least. 185 bench, it's close, but usually people tend to cross the 200 mark before really going into that territory. Finally, you started at 15. So your gains weren't the best anyway. Now is when you're really gonna start to peak. Between 18 and 25 years old, get ready. This is where things are gonna take off. And once you get on a really good program, it's just a matter of time. I don't really see any problems with you right now. Unless you start having plateaus in a few months, then come back to me and I'll give you some specific responses. How do I increase the size of my lower body but with minimal glute growth? I've decently built lower body but my glutes are bigger in comparison. I do not like this for years. And up to now, I've been avoiding focusing on my lower body due to this reason. Whenever I start focusing on my thighs and hamstrings, my glutes get bigger much faster than the rest of it. My torso is slightly longer than my lower body. Okay. It's hard to take out the posterior chain when you do big compound movements. Getting strong enough at even basic variations like the barbell back squat. Do nothing but that. Everything's going to explode. 
So even on a minimalist program, it's quite challenging to disengage the glutes completely. But what I will recommend to you, which is not what I usually do because I'm not a fan of this approach. I think we are already quad dominated as a lifting collective. I would say that you should do sissy squat specialization. Full on, bro. All the variations you could think of. Body weight only, assisted, with a weighted vest, with chains, maybe bands, with a cable attachment in front. Get creative, make that your main form of squatting. It's the most squat dominant way by far. I don't even know if I would tell you to do a barbell back squat at all, or even a front squat. I can't think of any freeway variation that's not a sissy squat that isn't gonna pack on meat on your glutes. So that's pretty much the only thing I could recommend. As well as recommending leg extensions. Yeah, sissy squats and leg extensions. And maybe some other machines that isolate the quad a little bit more. Oh, and also the human knee extension. So you can check out the knees over toes guy for that. But uh, I think you should still hit your hamstrings though. At least do a leg curl or try to work up to some Nordics. Probably stay away from the hip hinges because that's going to put a lot more pressure on the glutes. And that's not what you want. So that's my advice. I hope you don't get knee pain as a result. But I have no doubt that your quads are going to grow like crazy. Question, what gives superior muscle gains? One, 10 sets of bench. Two, five sets of bench plus five sets of flies plus five sets of extensions. I've been saying work capacity, so that's not an issue. Just rate the two options in terms of effectiveness. Number two, bro, I don't like minimalist programming. And if you're doing 10 sets of bench every workout, that's 20 sets a week, which might be too much for a lot of you. Sure, 10 to 20 is the zone, but I prefer you get those extra sets through an assistance movement. And in your case, I would split the volume in two. If you're really gonna peak it like that. Five sets of flat bench, five sets of flat dumbbell bench press. Then you could just do the extensions. You probably don't even have to do the flies at that point. Or if you want something that's even better, possibly for bodybuilding, you do three sets of bench, three sets of weighted dips, three sets of flies, then the extensions. To me, more exercises is generally better for minimizing overuse, giving you a synergy and ensuring that we're getting the most quality volume here because doing 10 sets on one exercise in one session is debatable by itself. Some research would indicate that five sets is all you need for one session, not multiple throughout the week, but that one workout in which you're doing the exercise, you might want to cap it at five. And in my experience, yeah, I've seen better gains in most cases when dealing with traditional percentages. Only exception would be the calisthenics workouts. So yeah, the more maximized, generally speaking, the better. Unless you have a really efficient exercise that just does the job that much better. Hey Alex, in your opinion, are burpees a safe exercise for the knees in the long run? I don't see why they would be dangerous to the knees. As long as you're not using sloppy form, you're reproducing the exact same technique or somewhat similar as it goes on, no problem. I get that when you're doing over 100 burpees, some breakdown can occur due to fatigue. But what I would say to that is, if you're doing more than one style, that takes care of the overuse issue right off the bat. So one workout could be 100 pump burpees, after that, two pumps, then you could do the eight count bodybuilders, then you could do the Navy SEAL style. There's so many variations that if you go through them all, I don't see why you'd be suffering injuries. Especially if you're not rushing into the most advanced workouts right off the bat. Usually guys are going to have issues because they're trying to do 500 burpees in one workout, even though they can only do 200. Obviously with time, you can work up to that. But for now, work with your current level of fitness. Don't ego lift. Hey, Alex, how much does weighted calisthenics carry over to calisthenic skills? I've heard some people say that getting better at weighted calisthenics won't improve relative strength. Who are these individuals? Because you're looking at a guy who doesn't really practice skills that often, yet is still pretty decent at a lot of them, like the front lever. My best is nine seconds wasn't that hard to learn actually there's a guy on youtube that did a maltese on his very first attempt you know how he did it by being absurdly strong at weighted dips and when i say strong i mean my numbers are a warm upset to him so strength is strength the skills are definitely technique based and you got to practice them to maximize the form aspect but the more muscle you have in those relative areas, 
prior to starting off, the greater the base and the faster you can go through these progressions. This idea that having a strong way to pull up won't help your front lever, for example, is absolute nonsense. Heck, if I can grab 60 pound dumbbells, lie down on my back with straight arms and lift them up like this, you can't tell me that's not gonna help when going into the Maltese or trying to learn it. If I can do serious numbers on weighted dips and push-ups, my bent arm strength, I get it. The planche stuff, it's straight arm, but it's still gonna be a certain degree of joint angle transference. So I get that strength is joint angle specific. I've been talking about this for years, but after a certain point, you're so much of a beast they can just go in there and do it no problem. And that's what a lot of these skinny guys and elitists don't understand. They've only done it one way. And haven't looked at the other guys who are starting off with weighted calisthenics and then going into the skill-based stuff. Because I'm telling you that they get there much quicker than everybody else. And that's certainly been my experience as well. Can I replace pull-ups for chin-ups on your novice program? Yes. The only reason why I chose chin-ups is because most novices can do more reps on that exercise. Some can do three chin-ups in a row, zero pull-ups. And that could be demoralizing to the point where they'll just jump on the lap pull-down machine or never go back to doing pull-ups again. End up being one of these guys that have great backs, but they suck on the bar. I don't want that happening. I want you doing chin-ups or pull-ups or any vertical pull that is free-weighted as soon as possible. And if chin-ups allow you to do that, which in most cases it will, please do them. But... If you're already strong enough to handle pull-ups and that's your default style that you'd like to adopt, I don't have a single issue with it. But for my novice program specifically, I should also mention that the chin-ups will do a slightly better job at developing those biceps. So when the minimalists come out and say, oh yeah, just do chins and your biceps are going to grow, that's actually more valid when we talk about complete beginners. Now when you're advanced or doing 165 pounds like your boy, kind of changes a bit. Unless you really take it that next level of 185, then 200 pounds. But then we're talking about feasibility here. It makes more sense to do a freaking curl or accessories afterwards. But if you're a novice just getting into it, you can do three chins and you work up to doing three sets of 12, 15. What do you think is going to happen? Your back's not only going to grow like crazy, but surely your biceps will too. But after a certain point, it just becomes a topic of diminishing returns. And that's what these guys don't get, which is why I'm trying to share it with you right now. So yeah. Use the style that best suits you right now. I don't care which one it is. Just get on the bar. And with that said, final question for this Q&A. Will you ever go above 200 pounds to see how strong you can get? I really don't plan on it because I'm not tall and being 200 pounds would be excessive. Already at 185, I felt fluffy. Imagine 190, 195, 200, bro. I'm going to be well above 20% body fat. I don't even think I would see my abs at that point. I could see them in the high 180s, but I've never been 200 in my life. And I think it's a bit too excessive. Like, I don't want to have sleep apnea. I don't want to have health problems. I'm trying to live as long as I possibly can. And the amount of food that would go into that, for what, numbers? When I'm going to have to cut down eventually anyway? Not worth it to me. I know some guys want to be the biggest, and that's their prerogative. They could do what they want, but... To me, health is number one. It has to take priority every single time. And I cap my percentages at 20%. Being 200 would be at least 25% body fat. Maybe even 30, I don't know. In no way could that be good for your longevity. And even though you're stronger, so what? What does it mean when you're not feeling optimal? Already being 175 pounds, the difference is noticeable. And I know that when I hit 165, which is my best weight, it's gonna be even better. So why in the world would I want to go up to weight classes? Especially since I love calisthenics, I love relative strength, and enjoy doing different types of training. At 200, man, you're limited. To what? Strongman, powerlifting, or being a heavyweight in some sports. But even then, you can probably still be a badass and be 40 pounds lighter. And that's what I see in myself long term. Would I go back to the 180s? Yeah. 190s, I would prefer not to, but 200s, that's not something I ever want to cross. Like I really don't want to go there. But that's just me. If you have similar stats and want to go down that path, be the absolute strongest you can be. Hey, we all make sacrifices to a certain extent. If that's what really makes you happy, 
I'll leave it at that. So this was the Q&A. What amazing questions. And I really appreciate everyone's support. So stay tuned for a lot more content. Should be a fun summer. I'm really looking forward to it.